Hi guys, this is Colette from My Computer's My Canvas. I just wanted to show you a couple of tricks that I did um, when I put my planner together. And um, hopefully these are some fun things that you can try with yours. Now obviously you can just print them and bind them, no big deal. But if you wanna go the extra mile, I have some really fun tips. So this one is actually six by eight. I followed the resize instructions on my blog and just printed this a six by eight size because it's so cute. But a couple things. First, with my cover, this is the color pack. This is the mint color pack. It was my favorite. What I did, my favorite paper is actually the glossy sticker paper. So I printed my cover on the glossy sticker paper, but then I stuck it to a sheet of cards of matching cardstock. And then I cut it out and laminated it just to give it a little bit more, um, you know, firmness. And then the other thing I did was with the dividers that come with the color packs, I actually printed two and I took one and cut, well, this is a different one, but anyway, you can get the idea here. I cut it so that I could make a little folder, see? So when I put my planner together, I've got a cover on the inside and then for each of the dividers, I just took a, another divider, cut it, and I made a folder. And all I did was I just used a little line of glue and or this like glue tape or whatever this is double stick tape and placed it on okay so look how cute um just a couple things about this planner i might as well point out um let's go back to the month page here so you're going to start your month with this is what i call the dashboard you've got personal goals for scripture reading or study temple family history church callings and assignments, whether you've paid your tithing and fast offerings, tasks and plans that could just be with, you know, life in general, notes and reminders, your ministering plans, um, things like this would be, you could hold receipts in here or to-do lists or whatever. Um, then you've got your calendar. Then these daily pages are awesome. So you've got your Sunday is anchored, kind of is an anchor to your week. I love these little pray and read. And then these little circles you can use for other things, like if you're exercising, maybe you mark it with an E and fill it in if you did it, or your water intake, or your diet, or your medications, or whatever you want to use those little circles for. You can just put a little, you know, initial or letter so that you know what they're for. And then these to-do lists I love because sometimes I have a lot going on, but they don't necessarily go on any one day. And so I can like make a shopping list. I can make, if I'm working on a project, I can make a list here. Um, I use these for work, like what projects I'm working on, what pictures I need to take, stuff like that. This heart right here, I'm getting some questions on that can represent whatever you want it to. It could represent ministering, service ideas, um, maybe a prayer, you know, maybe things you want to pray for that week. Maybe um, it can represent your calling. It can represent whatever you really want it to. Um, and then the light bulb, I kind of did for ideas, impressions, um, but, you know, the great thing about kind of some generic symbols is they can represent to you whatever you want them to be. And then maybe from week to week or month to month, that might change. And because they're not actually labeled, you can ha kind of have the fluid, the fluid use of that, of that piece. Um, so I went ahead and I made all of my dividers already. And I'm going to just set this aside. Oh, what I did when I printed... When I printed this, obviously these are the dividers that printed with it. And I didn't bother, bother to print these borderless because I knew I was gonna pull them out. You could go month by month and not print these, but it would just, I was like, you know what? To pull out 12 pages is not that big of a deal to me. So I just went ahead and printed it. And then I just pulled these out and just slipped these in where they go. So that's ready to be punched. So I'm gonna show you how to punch in just a second but I'm gonna show you another fun thing I made. So I love like the little dividers that you can put inside your planner to kind of or, like the little bookmark things. So I just took a cut, one of the other covers, I printed it, I did the same thing. I printed it on the glossy sticker paper. I put it on the back of just a piece of yellow cardstock. Then I've actually already punched this with my puncher and I'll, I'll show you how to use that in just a second. But the trick is, is I, tr I I clipped these. So when I when I bind this, all I'll have to do is, 
you know, push it in, and then I can just pull it right out and move it around. So I made two of these so that I could, um, you know, use them in my planner. So I'll show you how I kind of tuck those in in just a second. So I'm gonna grab my thing here. I use the cinch. I also have the Zutter. I recommend both. Um, I've had the Zutter, the Zutter Bind It All. There's a, I'll put a link in this post, but the, the Zutter Bind It All I've had for like seven years and I love it. The Cinch, it's basically, it's the same machine, um, but it's bigger and I've had less errors with my, um, with my rings when I go to clamp my rings. So I, I would probably, if I, now that I have both of them, I'm going to pick this one off my shelf every time. However, I still love the Zutter. It's a little bit cheaper, um, but I, it was a little fussier than this one. So I, if you have the extra 20 bucks, I would get the cinch if you're interested. So um, it's really easy. You're just going to grab a stack of your papers. And I mean, it's a pretty hardy machine, but I wouldn't stress it out too much. Now for me... I just kind of noticed this is a personal preference thing. There's a, I know you can't really see it because of this. I'll put this down. There's a sliding arm, okay? And you, you can butt your paper right up against here so that every punch is in the same spot. However, I just felt like that was too far between the first punch. So I marked a line right here. This is where I like to start each of my punches. That's just totally personal preference. You don't have to do that, but that's where I start my punch. So you're just gonna line it up, give it a punch. Then you pull that out. I don't know how good you're gonna be able to see this. Sorry guys, I'm not a videographer. I'm a printable lady. Okay, you put this in and there's to finish because you see it only did this many. See, the Zutter would have only done this many. So there's just less punches, so there's less opportunity for making errors. So I punched it right here. Now there's a little knob right here. So when you put it back in, you line the knob up with a, with a hole that's already punched and press it down. That's going to make sure the punches are in line again. And then you pop. Flip it up. There we go. There's my first set of punches. Okay. Um, I'll do one more set of punches and then I'll push pause while I finish it. So I'm gonna push this back in. I'm going to line it up with my line so that they're going to be nice and perfect. Punch it. Sometimes you have to kind of punch those out. I'm going to line it up and put my little stopper down. Punch it again. Then when I lay these over here, I'm going to put them right on top. Okay, so I'm going to finish the rest and then I'll be right back. So I'm back. I've got my things all punched. See? This is the front. So this is going to help me punch it. You take your O-wire and you put it right on here. That helps you line it up. Let's see if I can do this in one in one try I did so the O wire I always buy the Zutter brand because it's cheaper and you can get it on Amazon um, the brand that we are memory keepers it's the same it's the exact same wire and it's more expensive so regardless of which machine you get if you get one use the um, Zutter brand O wires because they're the exact same um, oh I did this wrong you when you put that on there, you have to take the back and you flip it to the front like that. Sorry, that is an important step. Okay, I'm gonna put this back on. When I use the O-wires, um, I like three quarter inch. One inch is way too big for me. Unless you want like a super chunky ring, I like three quarter inch. Okay, then this is how you use this. You come here, these different measurements are related to your ring size. So you use this dial to dial it to whatever ring size you have. 
and you put this in here. And the, the trick, the important trick, is to make sure that this is flush with the back. Okay, so just hold that in there nice and flush. Then as long as your dial is on the right thing, you're gonna take the thing, you're gonna take the lever and push down. Nice and tight. Then move it over if you have, if you still have rings. Make sure it's nice and flush. And push it down. We're gonna trim this off. I didn't bring my trimmers over here, so. And there is my planner. Okay, so just to show you this, when I open this up, I can then snap these in. Sorry, that's gonna bug me. But I don't have my thing, I don't have my trimmers with me right now. Okay, that was bugging me, so I went and got my trimmers. You're just gonna trim this off right here. So now, I have a little bookmark, see? And then you can just pull, peel this off. Actually, you could put it down farther. You can put it anywhere. Um, one thing, a couple things I wanna point out. My dividers, I printed on really cheap cardstock because I, I didn't want it, I wanted it thicker than regular paper, but I wanted it thinner than cards, regular cardstock. So this is like the cheap, cheap cardstock that you get at Walmart for like six bucks a ream, really cheap. Um, I probably wouldn't use this cardstock for about anything else because it's really thin, but it really makes my dividers kind of substantial. The other thing, this paper is 28 pound. And your print quality is really going to depend on the on the paper that you use. So a regular cheap paper, like just a white copy paper, is probably either 18 pound or 20 pound. I always print my planners on 28 or 32. If you buy my print and ship planners, those are on 32 pound paper because it's just it's nicer, it's smoother. It, the, you can write on it better. The pen glides on it better. I just love it. And then the other thing I wanted to point out was this is the Latter-day Lifestyle version. I do have another version that's very similar. It just is like non-religious. So um, that's in my shop. Anyway, I thought you guys would um, like to see just kind of what I do and maybe some extra tricks. And then the only bad thing about this planner is I have to wait till January to use it. So um, anyway, hopefully that helps give you, give you some ideas on how to punch and bind at home, how to put it together and kind of make it a nicer planner than just, you know, printing it off and sticking it in a binder. So anyway, thanks you guys. Um, leave me questions in the comments or just email me. Thanks. Bye.